Okay, so that should be recording um, just for all the attendees present. So all of this will be recorded and uploaded to our soon to come website and also posted on our Facebook page as well. So if you want to look back on the recording, it will become available hopefully in the next weeks uh, to come. Uh, for those of you who have attended our first session already, the uh, recording for that is also available online. So if you've missed that session, um, feel free to go on our Facebook page and you should be able to find that, which is an introductory talk to the uh, AFP or the SFP. Um, and that should answer some of the questions that you've submitted, uh, which is regarding the kind of generic questions about the AFP. Um, so to make a start, my name is Kitty. I'm one of the academic F2s uh, currently in Bristol. And tonight we've got Callum Presley, who's an academic F1, and also Antonia, um, who is also an academic F1. And tonight's session is going to be on white space questions uh, in terms of the application to the SFP. Um, just a few housekeeping things. Um, if you all look down at the bottom of your bar, there should be a Q&A option for you guys. If you submit all your questions there as we go along whilst Callum is presenting. If it's a simple question, Antonia and I will be monitoring it and answering it uh, as we go along. If it's something that we can discuss at the end of the session, then we'll just mark it to be discussed live and then we'll um, get onto that when Callum's finished his presentation. Um, you should all be able to see the questions that other people have submitted as well to kind of avoid um, duplicate questions. So, um, Let's make a start, Kellen, if that's all right. Okay, lovely. Um, so I'll just go back to the initial slide. Uh, can you see that okay? Is that all right? No, oh, okay. I think you might have frozen. Yeah, I can't see it either, Callum. Uh, I think he's stuck. <laughs> yeah. That's me. Yeah, okay. <laughs> He'll be back in a bit. Uh, Pre course question. Yep. Yeah, so we'll yeah, I'll send it again. Yeah. Already sent on the chat, but I'll send on the QA. Yeah, please. Uh, whilst we're waiting for Colin to rejoin, does anyone else have any other questions that they can start posing in the QA just in general? Hello, sorry about that. I think I. Oh, hi, Colin, welcome back. Some issues again. There we go. Okay, good to start. Yeah, I think so. Perfect. Okay, um, and let me know for any more technical issues. Yeah. Um, so hi everyone, as uh, Katie said, my name's Callum um, and today I'm going to be talking about the guide to the white space questions for your AFP application. <clears throat> um, I've put up the pre-course questionnaire already um, but if anyone has not seen it yet, uh, the QR code's here and there's a link in the chat as well. So a bit of an outline of this talk, um, I'll go over who I am um, a bit of an application summary for the um, SFP, I think it's now called, although I'll probably be calling it AFP quite a lot during this. Um, what are the white space questions? My own experience with um, white space questions in particular. Go through some examples and then we'll finish with a Q&A at the end. Um, so firstly, who am I? Uh, so I'm an AFP FI1 in the Queen Elizabeth University Hospital up in Glasgow. Um, I studied at Glasgow, so I've stuck around. Um, I did an intercalated degree in cardiovascular studies. Um, and that was after my third year. So if I quickly show you um, my own CV when I was at your stage, so just applying last year, um, I got a 2-1, so I didn't get a first. I had a few certificates of merit from placement, but I didn't have any academic prizes for exam results. I had one poster presentation, so not an oral presentation. And I don't have any publications. So I remember back when I was applying, I was really disheartened thinking, I don't have a list of publications. I don't have lots of presentations either. Should I even be bothering applying? But I went for it anyway. 
and you know here I am now and uh, I'm not the only person I know in this position so if you're feeling a bit kind of um, anxious that you don't have all of these things don't worry and um, I was in your position and it worked out for me and hopefully this talk will help you quite a lot with um, a part of the application that can be really helpful for you. So just to start with all of the information that I am giving you today can is pretty readily available on the specialized uh, foundation program website on the UK FPO. The link's just at the bottom of the slide there. And particularly at the bottom, the key documents, the white space questions part is really useful. The summary by unit of application is per deanery, which is really helpful. And I'd really advise you look into that before you apply for a deanery. And the rough guide to the AFP is really useful as well. Um, Access AFP also have a website which should be up and running uh, by the end of this month, uh, accesstheafp.com. For the time being, everything is going to be posted on the Access the AFP um, Facebook page, as well as a link to this website for when it's up and running. So a bit of a summary about the SFP application timeline. Um, this is the point we're at right now. So after the 22nd, you'll have put in your submissions and you've got your interviews. Uh, interview window um, from there onwards, but right now we're focusing on this little time period here where you do your white space questions. So if I show you um, an SFP application um, by points, so this is pre-interview, this is the application right now. Um, this is from the Scotland Deanery website as well. I will we'll be talking quite a lot about Scotland Deanery in particular, number one, because um, I work there uh, and I have a lot of experience there as opposed to other deaneries and number two because they actually have quite a lot of good generalizable information on their deanery site so this is the marks you'd get um pre-interview um, and if you look at a total of 50 so you get a few points for additional I think Callum's just frozen again there. Antonio, is that the same for you? Yeah, yeah. I think maybe give him. Oh, oh. oh there he is. And there we go. Where did I get to? Uh, you got to just starting the slide about the um this slide the here. scoring. Yeah. Um so I was I'll just start the slide again. So I'll be using a lot of information from Scotland Deanery because um I've got a lot of experience there and they have really good information on their website which is quite generalizable and um, so if you look at the points for the application pre-interview um, it's 50 in total five for additional degrees 12 each for presentation publications but for the white space questions it's 18 points which is the single biggest um, aspect of that application and um, almost a third of the whole thing and while it's not exactly that for every single deanery it's roughly the same if they do white space questions so you should really think about choosing um a deanery that has white space questions if you're in a position where you maybe don't have publications or presentations like myself so my own experience when i was applying i applied for scotland and london uh like i said no publications or prizes london doesn't have any white space questions i didn't make it to interview there scotland does and um i got through the whole process there so white space questions can be a really good opportunity to add a lot of points to your application if you don't have these other aspects and um, so you should choose them quite carefully so what are white space questions they're essentially open-ended questions about various aspects of afp and your own experiences prior to that they're pretty much many personal statements so they're a good chance to bring up things that aren't formally included in the rest of the application. So, for example, if you've done a small scale research project and then in a placement, if you've done kind of smaller scale presentations, maybe on a departmental level, you can talk about that. You can talk about your involvement in societies, too, because there's no area for that in the rest of the application and um, other things like extracurricular stuff that you may be done. This is the place to bring it up. Um, a lot of it is about demonstrating why you'd be a good um, AFP doctor and it's about your own potential to be um, a good AFP candidate, 
not necessarily the, all those concrete achievements that you've got from the past. The main thing to think about is key transferable skills, and we'll talk more about that later. But again, it's all about trying to show why you'd make a good candidate. And also think about your own personal plan for why um, AFP would benefit you. So which deaneries do white space questions? So these are all the deaneries highlighted in green that do white space questions as part of their application. Um, a couple to note, Scotland don't have um, optional questions and that'll make more sense in a moment. And Southwest don't have teamwork or um, general questions. And I'll go over that in just a minute. That'll make more sense. The deaneries that don't do white space questions, Northern Ireland, London, Oxford and Wales, although Wales actually don't have a separate SFP application as far as I understand, you get allocated to the deanery through standard foundation programme application first. The only one I'm not too sure of is Northwest. Um, I couldn't find any information saying, confirming or denying whether they do uh, white space questions. So this is what I was talking about before, mandatory and optional, or I've, I've called them role specific here questions. So they're broken up into categories. So mandatory questions are about your achievements and experience, teamwork skills, personal and career goals, and a kind of general category. And then you have programme interests. So as I understand it now, SFP posts are split up into research, leadership and education and teaching roles. So, for example, if you uh, were applying particularly for a leadership role, you wouldn't have to answer the research question, which is, I think is a new thing. Um, but again, if you're applying for all of these, you, they are effectively all mandatory. Um, so before you start uh, thinking about these questions or even looking at them, to be honest, you should really think about what you want to talk about and you should have things in mind that you think would be good to bring up for an application before you even um, before you even look at the question. I think you're just cutting out a bit there, Callum. Can you sorry? Did I get back to the start again? of this sorry. slide? Yes. Did I get to this slide? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, you did that. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Um, so before you start even looking at the questions, really, um, you should really think about what you want to talk about. Um, you should have things in mind that you think you'd like to talk about in your AFP application. And that's before you even know what the questions are. Um, if I you, I would write them down and make a list of what you have to talk about already. Um, and also look into why you want that particular program. So you might have a particular research interest. And this is quite important because it can be easy to really benefit your application and it can be easy to detriment it as well. So if I use my own experience in Glasgow, say you had a really big interest in cardiovascular sciences, um, Glasgow has a really strong research team for cardiology. And you can mention that for why you want to come here. Conversely, um, Glasgow doesn't have an academic gastroenterology team. So if you said, I want to come to Glasgow because I'm interested in academic gastroenterology, that would kind of display that you've not looked into it because you weren't aware that they don't have that team. So really look into where you're going and why you'd want to work there for your own interests. Um, decide carefully which of the topics you thought of before fits under which heading from this page and I'll cover that in a second too. Um, there could be a lot of overlap between headings and for different things that you want to talk about um, but you should think what themes can I fit into this this thing that I have that I want to mention. Try and think about how you would answer a question like this in general and you can use the sandwich approach so a short and snappy first sentence then detail it what did you do what skills did you gain and finally bring it back to the AFP you're applying for how will you bring, bring it forward and think about not just to F2, but beyond that as well. I quite like the Gibbs reflective cycle uh, for thinking through and structuring these answers minus the part about your own feelings. So describe what happened, what, what is the, the particular event or experience you want to talk about? What did you do? What was your involvement? What did you take from it? And then finally action, what are you going to carry forward into the future and into AFP using that? Um, my kind of top tips for do's and don'ts for mentioning things. 
you don't have that many words. You only have 200 to 250. So use your best and most important achievements um, and you'll know yourself what those are. Always, always mention how you're going to carry it forward. It's not good just to list things. They want to know how you're going to apply that to yourself in future. This is uh, not a, a solid point. It's not a you know hard and fast rule, but try to use things that you wouldn't necessarily include in the main, uh, main application. So if you had a publication, you could talk about it in your white space questions, but also you might want to talk about other things that you've not had a chance to mention. Make sure you um, actually answer the question. The questions can be quite specific and don't lose yourself in talking about an experience that's not actually relevant to the question. Show that you've displayed commitment. So again, that comes back to bringing things forward. You're committed to carrying forward skills and learning things and going uh, through your career in future. And then finally, think about why you make a good EFP doctor. Um, I think a lot of people tend to focus really heavily on the research aspect of EFP and forget about leadership and education, which are actually two massive uh, parts of AFP. So don't forget about those two. Again, don't, don't lose track of the question. Always go back to what they're actually asking you. Try not to mention the same achievement or event over and over in multiple questions, because I think it shows that you maybe don't have that many things to talk about. Um, whereas if you mention multiple things, then it shows you're quite well-rounded. Don't waffle because you do only have about 250 words. Um, you have to be quite concise. This is something worth thinking about. It might not change your answers, but don't assume that those who are reading the white space questions will have read the rest of your application. So they might not have read your list of publications or presentations. Um, don't bring up things that you can't expand on an interview because some interviews uh, might um, ask you more about this, much like your medical school interviews asking about your personal statement. So make sure you know that you want to talk about uh, things beyond what you've even written. And then don't just list achievements. You need to, again, I keep saying it, but talk about how you're going to carry it forward. So the next we're just going to go through some key attributes of white space questions and um, some examples as well. So like I said before, you've made a list of what topics you want to bring in uh, or what achievements you want to talk about and hopefully made a list using the headings I've mentioned before. So if you look at a question and how this applies, so this is the leadership question. Sorry about that. No, that's all right. I think just start again from the slide where, yeah, exactly that one just starts on the top. I think, yeah, top yeah. One example. yeah. So I mentioned before um, that you should have made a list of things you want to talk about and what headings they fit under. Um, we can also look at a question and see how different headings could apply to that. So this is a question that's readily available on the UK FPO website. It's I'll bring it up again later. This is the leadership question. So the example is, give one example in which you've demonstrated your leadership abilities from your prior experience. Um, so the subcategory of this one, it's obviously a leadership question, it mentions the word, but I mentioned there can be quite a lot of overlap. What else could fit under here? You could bring up your own achievements and experience. You could talk about teamwork in this question too. Maybe you've had a research uh, experience in the past where you've shown leadership, um, or maybe it's the exact same, but for education and teaching. So again, the questions may fit under very specific headings, but it's still a good chance to bring up things you've done in the past. So try and work these things in um, into each question. It's probably not a general or personal career question, so don't put in extra things that maybe don't fit. Make sure it does still answer the question. So if we just go through each kind of heading and talk about um, what to kind of think about for each question, for personal and career goals, for career, really think about what do you want to do beyond AFP as well? What do you want to do in the future? And how is AFP going to help you get there? How does this program relate to your own particular goals? And that's talking again about specialties. Um, and you might not need to know about a specialty. You might just be interested in the way AFP helps you um, work towards a more generic goal. 
um, have a good understanding of the clinical academic pathway beyond AFP. And that shows a bit of commitment uh, to a clinical academic pathway. Why would you make a good AFP doctor as well? So do you have transferable skills and achievements? Like I said, these can be really small things like small research projects, for example. But if you've taken something from them that you can bring forward, that's the most important thing. And also you need to show a good commitment to clinical medicine. You're not just going into this for the AFP aspect. You're still going to be first and foremost um, an FY doctor. So you need to show that you're committed to being a clinician too. When you're choosing a program, you can think about the CAMP acronym. So C for clinical. Is there a patient cohort you want to work with? Is there tertiary treatment centers or particular departments you want to work with? And for academic, it's the exact same. Is there a team you want to um, be involved with? Um, is there some kind of program where you're going to be working in academia after AFP? Management as well, think about opportunities for leadership where you're going. And then you might have your own personal reasons for wanting to go somewhere. So these are some example questions. Um, again, all taken from the UK FPO website. What are your specific reasons for applying for a program? Um, this one, I've just quickly gone through um, the answers I would maybe give very broadly. How would AFP contribute to my career plans? So an aspiration to be an academic clinician. It helps me to provide the best patient-centered care that I can, and then mentorship opportunities. So I've mentioned my kind of future um, plans and also brought it back to patient-centered care and commitment to clinical medicine. The next heading, so achievements and experience. I've made a note that this is the academic ones. There are also non-academic questions um, where they specify they don't want academic achievements. Um, outline your research experience. Uh, you do only... Obviously, you want to talk. Hello, my apologies. And um, um, someone's just mentioned if I maybe turn off my camera. So I'll try that just now if that's okay yeah. to maybe have the connection. So was I just at the top of this slide and it came up? Yeah. Yes. Yes. So um, the next is the achievements and experience uh, heading. I've added a wee note that this is academic. So you can have questions that specify that they want non-academic experiences. And I'll talk about those in a bit. So this is more specific to academic ones. So think about research experience. What research have you done? What would you want to talk about? It can be as small scale as you like. Um, if you have lots of experiences, it's probably more important to choose one that you can talk a lot about than mention lots. Um, you do only have 250 words again, so um, it's more important to talk a lot about one than show how many you've done. What was your role in that uh, experience? What skills did you gain? And what were the outcomes? So any presentations or publications? Or is there anything you want to undertake in the future? So think about even just in a specialty, is there any clinical case that you've seen that you want to perform a research project on? Or is it just a general uh, specialty you want to get involved with? And have a good understanding of research methodology and of current or topical issues in medicine too. For non-academic, like I say, it may specifically ask about non-academic experience. Um, it can be anything at all. The only thing to be careful with Try not to mention societies because this still counts as an academic um, aspect. The questions, although the experiences may be different, they're still the same in principle. What skills did you gain? How are you going to take it forward? How is it transferable to AFP? And this is just an example question here for non-academic. Give one example of a non-academic achievement and its significance to your application. For education and teaching, it doesn't need to be medical. You may have education experience elsewhere. Um, important to talk about the transferable skills, so teamwork, communication, self-reflection, what, what did you gain from an educational experience? Um, how have you shown commitment to teaching? So have you done multiple sessions where you've taken feedback and carried it forward? And how has it, again, affected you personally? How are you going to carry it forward? 
things specific to education and teaching think about the scale so have you done one-on-one -on -one teaching have you done small group or have you done large group like maybe lectures what experience have you got of those things but what experience would you like to gain so my own experience was that i'd done kind of small group but not large group and afp would help me uh, get involved with those they might ask too about specific types of teaching so simulation formative versus summative or oski so it's worth having a bit of an understanding um, of how those work and think about your own um, opinions of how they work and the advantages and disadvantages too and here's your example question so just describe your relevant teaching experience and um, your experience in sim training and uh, a question um, I've seen in the past that I'll quickly go through what is a teaching skill I'd like to take away from AFP so like I said my experience was small scale but not large so how would AFP help me access different scales of teaching that you might not have as a student the leadership heading so again it doesn't need to be medical try and think about specific situations and reflect on what your role as the leader was so it's this Gibbs reflective cycle what happened what did you do how does it show leadership so answering the question and what are you going to take forward from that into AFP um, it's quite a good opportunity to talk about extracurricular achievements uh, like roles in societies and um, leadership has a huge overlap with teamwork so try and talk a lot about both teamwork and leadership and vice versa an example question give one example of your demonstrated leadership abilities it can be anything at all and um, outside of medicine too so for teamwork this question can be difficult because there are so many examples but you should be able to think of anything where you've seen it on placement uh or within uni because all of medicine is based on teamwork and collaboration um as long as you can talk about the clear role you had and the contribution you made you can really think of anything and it can be a difficult clinical case you could be involved in managing a sick patient so just think about what your role was and how it fit in with the team as a whole same as leadership in terms of the reflective cycle what did you do what are you going to take forward the question might just be quite generic so say it might say something like how, why is teaching important sorry why is teamwork important in academic medicine but this is one of the questions where you should really be trying to use personal experience quite a lot so there you go, describe a time we worked successfully on the team. Um, for me, I talked about a role in a society, my teaching, a, a teaching role and a leadership role. So I brought in those two other headings as well. And I thought about challenges and difficulties and how they were overcome. And there you go, you might get a question as generic as this, why is teamwork important in academic medicine? The final heading is general. So this is a strange one. It's everything else, but it might have a slightly different format to other questions and might overlap quite a lot. So, whereas other questions have asked you a lot about your own experiences and what you what skills you've gained, the general question might actually be almost a knowledge based question. So, more like an exam question. It might ask you how research methodology works. If it is about you, it's the same as everything else. What did you do? How is it relevant? What skills did you gain? How are you going to carry it forward? If it's not about you and it's a more clinical or specific knowledge based questions, my advice would be think about patient centric care a huge thing to think about make sure you think about patient safety and ethics and make sure you answer the question quite directly because it can often be quite um, specific and need a reasonable amount of detail don't try and bring up something you did and talk about an experience if it impacts the actual knowledge base side of the question so an example um these are from the UKFPO website. What steps should you take to optimize um, experience? So this is a personal one. Um, here's one about an unanswered high priority challenge in medicine. So you can see these are slightly different to the other ones. The other ones are all kind of generic and you can talk about other things, but these can be quite specific. And here's one, quickly go through, describe how you would set out to answer a research question from a specific clinical case. So you would very, very briefly mention the case, maybe one sentence and then um, quickly move on to actually answering the question. So a step-by-step -step explanation of research, really mention ethical approval and safety. Patient safety is so important and there is something they like you to mention. 
So to summarize what I've been through today, white space questions offer a lot of points in an AFP application. Don't worry if you don't have all these concrete things that you mentioned elsewhere in the application, because white space questions are exactly the place to talk about extra things that you can't mention elsewhere. And it's all about your own potential, how you use previous experiences, whatever they may be. Make sure you answer the question. Don't forget to answer the question directly. Try and think of what you want to talk about before you look at the questions, because you will have things in your head. And I, I've said it so many times, but finally, always relate back to what you gained and can take forward. And that is, if you take away one thing, I would say that's the thing to take away for white space questions. Thank you so much for listening. So we do a Q&A Q &A now, and there's a feedback QR code here um, for people to fill out. Thank you. Thank you very much, Callum. Um, so now we'll kind of move on to just answering the Q&As. Um, uh, before we kind of get into it, the first thing I want to mention, I think there's a lot of people who kind of mentioned that they're not sure what achievements count as a non-academic achievement. Um, and a lot of people saying like whether being part of a medical society in university counts for it. Um, in general, and Antonio and Callum, you guys can chime in if you like. Um, as far as I understand, for the majority of postgrad applications, so AFP and beyond, whether that's core surgical training or you know IMT applications or whatever, any societies that are associated with medical school does count as academic. Um, whereas anything else that is university-wide, such as a, a sports society or music society or anything else like that, will be non-academic. Um, I don't think there's sort of a hard and fast statement anywhere on the UK FPO website, but in general, that's the kind of rule of thumb that I understand. Um, and certainly I've had a lot of senior um, academics tell me when I try to write something like that for my non-academic bits, they have told me that this is not appropriate because this is technically academic. Um, so hopefully that addresses all of those questions that you guys have submitted. Um, I think there was a question specifically for Callum and Tania um, that we mentioned, somebody submitted. Um, I think there's a lot of questions as well about like particularly are there any particularly good programs that we can recommend for any particular deanery uh, I don't really think we can answer that uh, just because the three of us don't really have any broad experience obviously of all the programs across the UK um, and also for those of you asking about how we can break down a, a particular white space question for this year. Um, I don't think we're allowed to do that um, just as part of this webinar series. Antonio, have you got any particular questions you want us to discuss live? One second. Um, so I suppose one that was kind of more specific, like the problem is, um, there are a couple of quite specific questions to um, white space questions that are there this year. Um, so for example, please can you expand on the question, please explain your rationale for your choice of programs for the research SFPs. I feel as, like there's a lot of overlap with the careers goal question. What are your specific reasons for applying for a special experience program? And there's a similar question like that as well um, about research opportunities. So it seems like all the white space questions are quite overlapping this year. Um, and I guess, do you have any hints or tips to answer white space questions that appear to overlap quite a bit? So if I just um, clarify a wee bit, um, to use. so these, for example, this one, these are ones given as example questions from the UK FPO website. Um, I think someone asked about the astrophysics question as well. That's, an, again, another one available there. I'm not entirely sure um, if they're actually going to be used. But the ones I've been over um, 
like the bold ones are old questions. So they're not being released for this year. They're from the past, which is why I've been able to go over them. Um, so I'm not entirely sure if I'm able to go over ones from this year in detail. But what I can say is that, yes, there absolutely is a huge amount of overlap between these questions. Um, these are obviously from very general, um, the UK FPO, so the, the entire UK. Um, obviously, when a deanery writes its own questions, they will probably not have quite as much overlap um, because they, they want to ask about as much as they possibly can. So I wouldn't necessarily worry that you're going to be answering effectively the same question twice. Um, I've seen someone else ask um, about, um, sorry, just a moment. Sorry, one of the questions here. Yeah, if you're applying for a medical education SFP, would you be asked about research methods in the general section? I don't know, but if you are, one of the deaneries that we you select um, education versus research versus leadership. Um, it would be, it would make more sense for the research question to be specific to the research part. But again, I don't know, it's, it's always a possibility. Uh, Okay, and then I think there were a few yeah. questions along the uh, along the, whilst you were presenting, Kellum, about um, people asking if they were focusing on a particular type of SFP, whether that's medical education, leadership, or research. Um, they were asking whether they should mention their achievements in the other aspects of it as well in their white space question, or should they just focus on that particular aspect of the SFP they're applying to? Um, so I will preface this answer with, I don't have an experience, uh, the SFP applications change this year. Um, I would be inclined to say, try and focus it on the category of the question. And they might be quite specific with the questions that they ask because it is, you know, this is the research heading. They might be quite specific with what they ask you, but I would be inclined to keep it, uh, keep it to the heading. Yeah, I would agree. I think from obviously the, the process has changed, but when I applied two years ago, there were questions that you could take either way, like you could focus a bit more on research or education or leadership if you like. Um, I would focus it on to whatever you're up or you're mainly trying to apply to. If you're somebody who was sort of like me, I was mainly aiming for a research post, but I was open to accepting a potential job in educational leadership if I got one, you can always sort of focus the bulk of your answer on research and then have like a bit at the end explaining that, but you would also be interested in gaining some experience in educational leadership. Um, and I think related to another question that someone else asked, you can sort of link them together. So for me, I mentioned things like, well, I also have experience in um, teamwork and leadership, which is also an important skill in research, especially for now when uh, collaborative research is becoming more and more important in the academic field. So that's something that you can consider in your answer. Um, there's still lots about non-academic stuff. Uh, okay, someone's asked, can we talk about achievement or roles prior to commencing medical school? Yeah, you absolutely can. Um, anything that's been relevant to you that you can take forward. Um, the only thing to be careful of, of is make, just read the question really thoroughly. Sometimes the white space questions can be quite long and have specifications within it, for example, like talk about a time in medical school. Uh, so make sure it doesn't say that, but yes, you absolutely can talk about things prior to medical school. Um... <laughs> so there's still lots more questions about non-academic stuff if it's a social event leading role under an academic society that counts as an as, as an academic role unfortunately it's not non-academic um and there was also i think a couple of other ones about oh, if it turned into an academic achievement what do you do um i'm 
not really sure what you mean in terms of that. Um, if whoever it was that submitted that question, if you could elaborate a bit maybe on what do you mean by a non-academic achievement becoming academic? Um, I suppose you can always mention the non-academic side of it, but I guess if you're talking about how it ended up in a publication or something like that, it depends on the context of what you're, you're saying. It's really hard to answer that one. Um, so I'm going to, if you kind of submit a bit more information about that, if you want to keep asking it, I suppose. Um, okay, there's someone who asked, if you're applying to two deaneries and one requires the white space question and the other one doesn't, would you tailor your answers to the particular deanery which has required the white space questions? Um, since everyone can view the white space questions, would it disadvantage you for the deanery that does not require it? Um, again, this is difficult to answer because obviously we had different uh, rules as such when we were applying, but I would think that for deaneries who state they do not look at white space questions, I don't think they would actually look at the answers that you put in, so I don't see any reason why you wouldn't focus it onto the deanery that you're actually, um, that actually requires the white space questions because just from a logistical point of view, correct me if I'm wrong, I guess, but um, it would require that particular deanery to assign examiners to look at your white space questions, which is extra resource and time that they have to invest into it. So I would assume that if they said they're not counting the white space questions, I wouldn't worry about it. Um, Oh, yes, and then there's a couple of questions about the kind of specific points allocated for various aspects of the application. So um, when I applied two years ago, and Antonia and Callum, please correct me if I'm wrong, um, most of the deaneries don't uh, share how they mark your applications. Um, I think there is one or two exceptions to this, and the deaneries that do will release it on their postgraduate website and they're usually quite detailed in how they mark it. If they don't have it on their particular postgraduate um, deanery website, I would assume that it's just a private process and unfortunately none of us would know the answer to that. So I would say that for a seven, for example, um, like nothing, I've not seen anything like the Scotland one that Callum showed earlier, but for Severn, um, there was some information on Oreo, so I think you could try there as well. Yeah, so I think most deaneries have something uh, which, you know, the, the degree of how specific they are will vary. I think most deaneries will have something like a vague document saying what is uh, like criteria that is needed to apply in the first place and then like preferable criteria, which can be something as specific as, oh, we want you to have up to 10 publications or um, something as vague as oh, extra additional academic achievements. So that really depends on just the deanery that you're applying to. Um, can you summarize some of the key transferable skills that you found important um, for an AFP applicant that you can mention in your white space question? Callum, would you be able to answer that? Yeah, of course. Yeah, so I think, um, so Katie already mentioned teamwork and collaboration. So um, that's really important and quite topical in research because it is becoming much more collaborative. Um, my personal experience uh, so far, one of the most important things I think I've kind of learned about, I suppose, is trying to balance your time between clinical and academic work. Um, if you displayed kind of time management prioritiz prioritization in the past, um, that can be a really important transferable skill because ultimately, they want to know that you're going to be a good clinical doctor as well as an academic um, uh, researcher, for example, and they want to know that you're able to, you know, efficiently manage your time. So kind of time management, prioritization, teamwork uh, is really important. Taking the lead um, 
having a bit of initiative in the past and uh, you know showing a bit of independence I suppose um, a lot of it is actually the clues kind of in the headings of the questions so you get a teamwork and leadership question for a reason um, but yeah I would say those are the main things I would consider to be important for me yeah, and just to add on to that, um, there is something called the CANMEDS model. So you can just Google it. It's C A N M E D S, which is um, the idea is that uh, there are various aspects that go into someone who becomes a medical professional. And it includes things like academic work, um, teamwork, collaborative work. Um, and various other aspects. And I use that model a lot in my white space answers two years ago and kind of directly addressing the things that are listed on what makes a good doctor essentially, because um, don't forget as well that although you're applying for an academic foundation post, the primary thing that they're also assessing you on is that you're going to be a good doctor as well. So, um, you know, being able to explain how you're going to be a good clinician and obviously lots of skills like time management and things like that also go into it. So that's something that you can, you guys can look up and see if you can address all those aspects in your answer as well. Um, Katie, can you post the, uh, the thing in the chat or something just because of the, yeah. the name of the people are asking about the model? Oh, yeah, perfect. Yeah, there you go. Can meds literally what it sounds like. Um, okay, and then lastly, I just want to kind of put the non-academic achievement thing to bed because there's so many people asking about it. Um, so just for as an example, and I answer the non-academic achievement in my application two years ago, um, I mentioned that uh, is actually my ties to music. So I play violin and piano and I was a concertmaster in the University Symphony Orchestra and um, in other symphony orchestras before that. So that's quite a well-defined non-academic achievement, I guess. But the main thing that I worked into that answer was the same um, characteristics and preferable uh, skills that would be relevant to an AFP. So it's great to talk about any non-academic achievement, but make sure that you know how you can relate those skills back to the AFP. So for example, being concert master, I mentioned things like, well, I then developed my leadership and teamwork skills within that role. And you can explicitly mention that you've applied these same skills to a medical achievement. So for example, I said, well, the, the skills that I uh, developed whilst I was uh, teaching or leading in this particular role is directly applicable to my role on a medical society when I was at medical school. Um, so hopefully that kind of ties your answers together and makes it really clear that you're relating the non-academic achievement to skills that are applicable as a researcher or as a clinician as well. Um, Oh, there's one particular question for Callum. Uh, can you just elaborate on what you mean by a certificate of merit um, and what that, what that means and what that counts as? So, yeah, um, I think it's maybe a bit of a loose term. At Glasgow Uni, if you particularly excelled uh, in placement at the discretion of your supervisor, you would get a certificate of merit. I'm not sure how other universities do that. Um, but some deaneries uh, accept that as a kind of prize, if you like. Um, so if you've got some kind of merit uh, or distinction, for example, from a placement or for a particularly particular year, you need some places accept that uh, under your prizes, prizes part of your application. There's also another question for you, Callum. Um, so this person is at Glasgow Uni asking for your contact details and also um, asking at Glasgow how much time do you get off for research? So uh, hang on, I've got the question here. When did you describe your research? So the first part of the question, I think, I think it's for everyone. So when describing your research should be more of an overview that you can expand on. Um, yes, because you only have 250 words. Um, it's a fine balance of being broad but also direct and concise um, so you should summarize things to a point where you feel happy that you've got 
your message across, but in a 250 word answer. And yeah, you can talk about it much more in an uh, uh, interview later if it, if it comes up. Um, the rest of the question at Glasgow, so in F1, you don't get any time off for research at all. Um, F1 in AFP at Glasgow or West of Scotland in general is uh, the same as standard F1, but you get two sessions. So 1 a.m. and 1 p.m. session off a week in F2. Um, and yeah, I'm happy to give my email uh, to you if you want to ask any more questions. If you just send me a private message in the chat or something. Um, there's a question about, again, so just for sort of legal reasons, we can't really divulge into the specifics about applications to certain deaneries. It's sort of just not allowed. And um, I'm, I'm sure you guys will understand the interview process. Obviously, they have a bank of questions that they ask and that sort of thing. So um, that they reuse as well. So we're not allowed to tell you about that. Sorry. I should just clarify as well when I was talking about the certificates of merit. Well, I think that's um, that's it, really. Yeah. When I was talking about the certificates of merit, that information would be available on the Deanery website before you apply. Any other questions anyone wants to pop on the chat? Um... No. I think in terms of the cardio department question came up twice as well. Um, I don't know how much um, Callum was able to answer that, but uh, obviously Callum, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the, the um, British Heart Foundation centres are usually the ones with good research um, AFP areas, but um, yeah, just have a specific look at the different deanery websites because it, there might be a big BHS building there, but it doesn't necessarily mean that there are AFP um, research opportunities there too. Um, do you have contacts for AFP, F1s, F2s from other deaneries? Um, yeah, so we're in the process of trying to get a number of junior academics together for the mock interviews that we offer as part of our course, uh, which will run in such a November to December time. Um, at the moment, we haven't got a list of people who have given us explicit consent to share their contact details. Um, when we ask for participation in the mock interviews and things, we'll try and um, get that information and see whether that's possible to be made open to you guys, but it might not be possible just because there's, um, you know, uh, just in terms of the contacts and things and sharing it with lots of anonymous people online might not be the best idea. But when we come to the mock interviews, it might be possible to try and link you guys up to deaneries that you're applying to, but there's no promises because it just depends on who you've got. Interviews in East Midland and Oxford. Yep, so we plan to do our mock interviews. Uh, last year, we started in early November or late October. Um, we'll endeavor to do the same this year. Um, and last year we gave uh, some priority to people who signed up, who said that their interviews are earlier to give them an earlier slot as well. So hopefully we can do that again this year. Are there any other questions, Antonia, that was highlighted on the sort of pre-webinar uh, form that we haven't answered? No, I think we've answered all of those, yeah. Okay, so I think that is bringing us to a nice close. Uh, I don't think there's any more questions to be answered. So uh, yeah, so I hope you guys all enjoyed the session. I hope it was useful. Thank you, Callum, so much for presenting um, today and sharing your experiences with us. Um, 
Again, the post course questionnaire and feedback form links are all posted in the chat so you guys can find it there. And we'll send out emails in due course with the recording and we'll make it available on our Facebook page as well. Um, I think that's everything, unless there's anything else. Okay, thank you guys very much for coming on tonight. Um, I'll stop the recording now and um, have a good evening. Thank you so much.